Hi, man, Drum Drum, and welcome to the Back on Fizz Teardown Lab. Now, I bought this from Temu, and it comes in this nice little brown bag. And it's a kind of a very thin material, a bit like a Tyvek, but it does look like it is water resistant. And believe it or not, this whole thing was five pounds. And I'm sure you're wondering what it could be. Well, apparently, it's a portable stove for your camping and hiking adventures. And I'm just going to get rid of some of this stuff, which will save me doing it on the trail tomorrow. That is annoying. <laughs> They've actually folded the edge over, which means there's no easy way to get rid of the plastic that's going to be falling underneath the edge of that. So that's going to have a bit of gunk. So I'm going to run a blade around in a moment. But let's just see the rest of the construction. Look. Ah, <laughs> that is glorious. Now I'm guessing this is your cooking surface. Well, it can't go that way, can it? Because that internal flapper doodle would flap down. So it has to sit this way because that locks it all up. There's a few little catches in there, so that's quite strong. So how does it work? We have this little... Oh, this must be the ash pan. It fits. No, that doesn't fit in there. How? I might have to refer to a diagram. Temu app. I don't know if you can see that. Definitely this way around. That bit down there. They've got this doodly hip sticking out. One each side. I guess that's probably the handles to move it. They've got this little door open, which has a twisty lock. So they've got a little door open, and inside I can see that. Yeah, and on the top, they're just plonking this uh, grill. This is always the worst job in the world. I hate it so much. I hate it when you buy something that's been laser cut. I hate it when it's something like this. Honestly, I would prefer to have some scuffs in this finish for something that's just going to be sitting in the bottom of my camping bag. As predicted, scalpel needed. Well, this is about as good as it gets with me. You can see I've left quite a lot on there and I honestly feel sorry for the person who has to take promo pictures of this because clearly they've had to do a far better job than I have. There it is set up and it really was no bother at all and it does feel actually pretty stable. We've got some seasoned wood here and we're going to whittle it down to some kindling with an axe. Holy smokes, that was a, that was a more of an unexpected... Here's the kindling. I uh, ended up doing the last bit there myself, so it's hard to film, but you can see you just take an axe and do a little swing. You don't need the big swings actually, it's just this is seasoned wood, it'll split nicely. And uh, we're just going off into the forest to get some silver birch so that we have something to catch because obviously it's all a bit damp and if you hold a match to this it's not going to do anything. So the logic behind all of these different grades of kindlings, you're going to work your way up through them. Um, and the reason we've got plenty of them is that once it gets started you do not want it to go out because you can see already everything here is damp. I just put my cup here as a as an indicator to see even in this relatively sheltered under this tree um, rain indicator and you can see there's a lot there but we'll try. Do you happen to know what uh, type of material that one is? This is the one I'm lighting. Silver birch. Oh, yeah, there's a few few hot embers in there. You need to summon your inner Ray Mears now. Yes. He wouldn't give up. He wouldn't, would he? So when it works, it just works. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to do this wrong, but we don't have a huge amount of yeah. work.
arranged all our various bits of wood in the hope that it'll dry out a bit. Oh yeah. Initially, as we took the pieces of wood from there and put it in there, it didn't look like it was gonna work out, but this definitely is acting like a little chimney and it's really burning hot in there. I would say almost, if you could get this started as soon as possible, that might be your quickest bet, really. To get a hot drink. To get a hot drink, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you could do the whole uh, magnesium thing into there, but if you could get it going in there, it's happening. A brew is on. I'm very impressed with this little guy. In fact, I'd probably <laughs> put my fuel store elsewhere because it's that hot, the flames are just creeping out the door. Save those. It's nice and dry now. You can actually shut the door because this little key ring handle doesn't get particularly hot. I mean, be careful. Don't, don't just grab it. But that will allow you to control the fire and you can stack up your bits of wood on the outside, obviously not obstructing your air holes too much, and that'll keep them nice and dry. And I think you could use that to control your burn. Okay, I touched it with my finger, but it wasn't like sizzling. Maybe just be careful. Woo! That's hot though. <laughs> That's bloody hot in there. Crikey. Ready to go. You want some That's, hot chocolate? I do want hot chocolate. And that was only a tiny bit of wood. I reckon with the wood there, you could do like a big old thing of pasta or something. Nothing left to do but drink the hot chocolate and watch the flames burn. Just an observation. Obviously, when you're done, you could remove your grill and just use it like a little fire pit. Um, but it does have these handles. And I'm not really brave enough to try to grab them at the moment, but they probably don't get too hot. So if you've got an oven glove or something, you could probably move this. I mean, that's the point of it having a bottom on it, that it will be relocatable within reason. However, I would let that die down a bit first. Mm. Um, Just like that, out comes the sun. And it has cooled down now, so it's quite... Better to put the 